Thank you for watching, and remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your support. We do think we're going to have a strengthening system here. We know it will be strengthening into the Gulf of Mexico. And it's vital to understand your home's vulnerability to tropical weather. Having a family plan before it approaches is very important. Meteorologist Mark Elliott has a checklist of things to do before the storm. Um, timing for Lake Charles, because I know that's on the question of a lot of minds here. First of all, we do have the tropical storm watches. That's in yellow. The hurricane watches in orange up across this area. And you even inland impacts, too. It's not just a coastal thing. You think of it as a coastal impact. But even those winds will carry inland, too. And the water, too. So we're talking about a tremendous amount of rainfall from Ida moving in. And on top of that, we're going to see the winds and then the storm surge immediately by the coast. That's going to add up to be a whole host of problems. Now, for Lake Charles, uh, it's going to be a very steep gradient drop off of what we're going to see as far as who gets the highest rainfall totals. And just on the western side of that, it probably won't amount to a whole lot. But as we continue to track Ida across the Gulf, we could see a little bit of a wobble to the east or to the west on exactly where this makes landfall. Yeah, and, th and that will make a difference into exactly where we see some of the biggest rain along the path and to the east will be some of the bigger totals that come in. Now this rain that you see here on Saturday, this is still um, well in advance of when we get the impacts from the hurricane. That comes in on Sunday. And by the time we get to Sunday, that's where we're going to really start to see conditions going downhill here across southeast Louisiana, especially this is where we have more than six, maybe six to ten inches of rainfall. That's a possibility for us right here. And I think it's impressive just how far inland yeah. that really heavy rain goes. The tide is going to make a huge difference, uh, especially for areas like New Orleans. If we're at high tide or low tide, mm -hmm. exactly when this starts to make landfall, high tide obviously would be worse. But right now, it looks like some of these areas might get lucky where we're looking at an afternoon, maybe evening landfall, and that would be low tide. And that would yeah, maybe... For Bay St. Louis, it would be in Mississippi. Yeah. That a, could be helpful. A little bit of a break. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about a lot of big factors here, and that would just be one potentially that could help us out. And that rain extends all the way into Mississippi. I mean, Mississippi could see anywhere upwards of six inches of rain, and even coastal Alabama could see very heavy rain yeah. and as we push this even into the Florida panhandle still seeing rain well outside that forecast cone that we've been watching. Yeah and I think beach concerns here too so don't plan on any beach time on Sunday it's the, the red current risk will be up the red flags will likely be flying maybe even the double reds is really the best thing you can do we know the rate of accidents goes up when there's rain like this that's coming down so we are looking at big time rain three to five inches widespread that's in yellow we get into the five to eight or even eight plus inches of rain rainfall that's in the red you can see that down here in southern Louisiana so you watch those bands when we see the hurricane get into the Gulf of Mexico we'll be able to show you, you know, sort of where the biggest rain producing bands are going to be and where they start training that's where you get into some of those biggest numbers you know we're also looking for a pretty wide footprint too this is the GFS model it's a little different than the European model just because it has the point of landfall different a little further to the east but still you see well inland well up into Alabama into Mississippi we've got a lot of rain coming in at least three to five inches and that will cause a lot of travel concerns here so avoiding travel during these times is one of the the best things that you can do it's also all about planning too and you know the planning has been going on for years if not decades in Louisiana when it comes to New Orleans and dealing with the fact that we are below sea level here it's got the Mississippi River off to our south we got Lake Pontchartrain and then you know between that all the canals and everything else that run through the city there are pumps that can pump out an inch in the first hour during during that first hour of rainfall and then a half inch per hour after that up to five inches. But we do know that chance is there to get more than that amount of rainfall. Look at the forecast for New Orleans. We've got five to six inches of rain coming our way because of Ida. And so that the surge, there's a lot of water concerns that we have here into Louisiana. Stay with us right here I on the weather. That, you know, after last year, we're, you know, right in the crosshairs again this year in Louisiana. So take a look back. This was last year, four landfalls, Laura, obviously Delta. Then after that, we had Cristobal and Zeta, which came through affecting the New Orleans area. And then of course, for us in Lake Charles, we had Laura, we had Delta, then we had a winter storm here and sub freezing temperatures. And then we had big flooding that came in in May of this year. So we've had a multiple disasters affecting us. But let's just go back to Laura because I want to talk about some lessons learned here just in terms of surge and what we saw. We did see some water in downtown Lake Charles from Lake Charles itself. We had just over four and a half feet of storm surge there. But along the coast is where we saw some of the biggest surge. Calcasieu Pass, 
more than nine feet. That is a life-threatening surge, more than 13 feet in Grand Chenier. That was last year because of Laura. Let's look at this year, what we're expecting because of Ida. Remember, Laura had winds of 149 miles per hour when it came and made landfall. So we're watching the storm surge area. The watch is in purple here all across coastal Louisiana. The surge expected highest along and just to the east of the center of circulation, seven to 11 feet is what we're expecting. It's not just Louisiana that actually extends into Mississippi as well. So there will be surge impacts here, seven to 11 feet. We've been telling you today about some voluntary evacuations in Grand Isle. We just learned on our air here about a half hour ago that there are now some mandatory evacuations in parts of Plaquemines Parish. So pay attention to your local officials, your emergency managers. They will be the ones that put the alert out for what you are supposed to do. Now to give you more background on what goes into making these surge forecasts, you look at the time of high tide because when you have the peak surge coming in at the time of high tide, it just makes it that much worse. Sunday for us here at Grand Isle, the low tide is at 2.52 in the afternoon, which may be somewhat helpful to us here, but unless, of course, the system slows down and makes a later landfall into the overnight because that's when we get to our next high tide.